Hi, this is Jim with Fisk Hobbies, and today we're going to be building a crack beaver. Hey there, everybody. I am so excited to get this beaver in my hands. I've been waiting a whole week to get it in the mail. So let's take a look at everything I got. First, I got the plane itself, and I printed out the manual. I also bought the full power combo, the receiver, some glue, and a prop, prop balancer. Let's open it up and see what's inside. So this is the red or raven color scheme that's on it. And I'm gonna spread out all the parts. I'm gonna inventory the parts and make sure I have everything here. Uh, in the manual, they do a really good job of listing all the parts and what they are. So I'll speed this up a little bit once I get going, but it looks like I've got everything. I've got the fuselage, the wings, everything laying out there. And then this is the hardware kit. Again, the manual does a great job of showing all that stuff. I haven't used a prop balancer yet, so I'm excited to do that. And first thing we need to do is fold over all of our surfaces. So folding over the ailerons on the wings, folding over the rudder and the elevator. Once I've done that for about an hour, then I'm gonna glue these pieces together. And on this, I put the glue on, I'm using foam tack glue for this, and then I squeeze it together, I pull it apart and let it sit for a minute or so, and then when you squeeze it back together, it tacks up really fast. While it's tacking up there, I continually like push it back together every now and again, but I'm gonna get rid of all of the little pieces that are still inside the wing, and I'm gonna dry fit the spar. I should have let this dry a little bit more, but I was impatient, so I went for it. Putting glue on both sides of the spar, I put the glue in there first, and then you open it up and you get it set. Make sure it's stuck all the way across. Make sure you're not getting glue on your work surface. If you notice there, I've got some parchment paper underneath. And then we're laying some batteries on top to make sure everything stays flat. Now we're gonna be cutting apart the fuselage. You wanna pick the half that has the smaller connecting tabs. That's the one to cut apart. And I'm getting my landing gear strut spars all ready to go. We're gonna be placing those inside of the landing gear struts. And on these struts, you just wanna make sure that they are connected to the right part of the fuselage and that they have the channels that go on the, along the inside of them. So I scuff them up with some sandpaper and then wipe them down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Fill those slots with some foam tack and slide them in after dry fitting them and make sure everything's good. There's gonna be a little bit extending out. Once you've weighted them down and let them dry, you can set them aside and start work on the wheels. So I pop everything out of the plywood and then sand it up to get all the burrs off of it where they connect. And then we're gonna make a little sandwich out of the wheels. You put the donut part on each edge and the solid part in the middle. And then you're gonna toss in the wooden piece into the middle. I probably put a little too much foam tack on this. It squeezed out a little bit. So if I were to do these again, I would probably go a little lighter on the glue or just put it more towards the inside. Set those aside and then we're gonna work on our axle supports. Those are gonna fit in between the support struts and then we'll glue them in place. And now we're ready to dry fit the entire fuselage together. And that looks like it's come together nicely. So we'll pull it back apart, add some glue to the tabs and then squeeze it all back together. I really like this X fuselage setup. It's really interesting how it comes together and makes the landing gear. Uh, it's my first foamy that's oriented like this. And it's pretty straightforward putting that glue on. Uh, also, you're gonna have to fit the 
landing gear support strut all the way through. So make sure to put glue into that as well and then force it all together. Make sure it's all lined up. Now we're moving on to the landing gear. And they said to sand these up. I don't know that I'd sand them up if I did it again. I think I'd just add some extra glue in that area because that does tend to be an area that gets a lot of stress. I did sand those and then anytime I sand any carbon fiber, I hit it with a little bit of CA to seal it together so it doesn't fray. We get the landing gear set up and they should kind of uh, angle downwards a little bit towards the table. In the manual, they have you reinforce this area with some thread. I just didn't have any thread. I'll probably go back later and do it. Then we can move on to our elevator and our elevator spar. So I had to cut it open a little bit more because it didn't fit all the way down. Dry fit it, scuff it up, clean it up, and then glue it in and let it dry. Now I'm taking out all my side force generators, then the antalyzer and decorative exhaust stacks. And then we're gonna be moving on to the motor mount. I'm gonna scuff it up with some 110 grit sandpaper, clean it up with some rubbing alcohol, and then I get it attached. Some people use some blend derm tape on it, but I've never had the need for it. After that, you're going to attach a bulkhead right behind the motor mount. I wish I would have put some spray paint on the motor mount just to make it a little darker, but in this case, I ran out of time and couldn't. Now we're gonna start work on our control horns. I'm gonna cut each of them off and then after I cut them off, I'm going to clean them up on the edges and then I come back and sand them up before I do a final install because I just want to make sure there's extra grip. So I sand them up on the edges that are going to get some glue and then I fit them into the rudder and the elevator. The rudder took a little bit of opening up to get it all the way in and fit correctly, but it was not too big of a deal. Now, on the control horns for the wing, they say that you can put them all the way down so that they're flush with the bottom of the wing for more wild, extreme 3D throws. And of course, who doesn't want a wild beaver? I put mine all the way down. If you want it to be a little more mild, then you can mount them flush to the surface. Then we attach the elevator and rudder assembly together. And then the next thing I'm going to do is bind my receiver calibrate my ESC, make sure the motor's going the right direction, and also center my servos. There's a link to a video on how I do all of this in the description. The hardware kit came with some servo horn extension arms, and I wasn't sure where to put these, whether they should go with the elevator and rudder or on the ailerons, and I thought they should go on the ailerons, but I gave Twisted Hobbies a call and they said that they're not needed. I was like, no, I want the extra throw. So I put them on anyway. They were right. They weren't needed. Now I'm going to install some of these end links onto the servo horns. And the easiest way to do that is with a little piece of wood with a hole drilled into it. I'll include a little video that shows that in a little more detail. But then you're just able to push it right through and those get stuck on really nicely. We're going to go ahead and install the servos into the wing. It's a little channel that's pre-cut in there that you can just push the wires down into. This is all going to be hidden because it's inside of the fuselage. Next, we're going to dry fit the elevator and rudder servos, but we're going to assemble them outside. Same thing with those end links, just pushing them through the servo horns and then screwing them onto the servos and then getting them installed. You want to make sure they're centered and in the right place beforehand because once you get them in the plane and the wing on top, it's hard to access that area. So you want to get that set up before you close it off. Here I'm poking a little hole into the bulkhead at the motor mount to be able to pass through the motor wires. And then you get them through and then you're able to secure the motor. And then we're going to assemble the push rods for the elevator and rudder. So here I'm 
measuring and cutting out the heat shrink. I thought I needed six pieces, but you only need four. They give you two extra little end links. And then we're gonna start assembling them. So a little bit of glue, a little bit of heat shrink, and I just dip the end of the rod into the glue and then install the heat shrink after. Make sure it's all dry before you try to heat your heat shrink because the adhesive is flammable. <laughs> So once those are all tightened up and ready to go, then I am going to put on all of the guides and then install the push rods through the end links and get those hooked up to the elevator servos, get them snapped into place. Make sure they're nice and tight, but don't go too tight on the end links because you'll crush your carbon fiber ready to install the rudder and elevator assembly. So you glue them up and I just did it on the very edges of the piece that goes into the V there. And then the bottom piece hooks up to the bottom of the rudder as well. And then I elevate this off the table a little so it doesn't push it out of alignment. Then once it's all dry, we're gonna be installing the push rods. So I thread it through the end link first, and then we're gonna be pushing all the guides in, affixing them permanently, and then pushing the snap link into the elevator and rudder horns. First, I go through and get them all placed in there. It's a little tough to see where all the little holes are, but once you're able to find them, then you can go back through one by one and glue them into place. I do that on the rudder and then on the elevator. We then trim off our push rods and tighten the end links down. I always put a little drop of CA on the end of those just to make sure that they're not gonna fray. Now I'm installing my ESC and my receiver. Then we'll put the side force generators onto the elevator. And then the secondary firewall I used that cover as a guide to figure out how far back it needed to go. And then just carved out a little area underneath it for the wires. Next, we need to verify that all of our servos are set up and adjusted correctly because once that wing goes on, it's permanently there and it's gonna be much harder to get in and adjust anything. So I'm checking to make sure my ailerons are working and it looks like I didn't put one of, I didn't center one of them because my radio was only set up for three channels, four channels. It wasn't set up for the fifth channel. So I had to take that servo out. Good thing I didn't glue it in yet. And then centered it, readjusted it, and put it back on. No big deal, glad I did it now, rather than having to mess with it once it's all glued together. And then I also adjusted the elevator and rudder while I was in there. So now we're ready to glue in the servos for the rudder and elevator. I just use foam tack on them. A lot of times I'll use hot glue on servos, but for this, I knew they were gonna be in there forever unless something went terribly wrong. So I got them glued in. These are flush to the bottom side of the wing on the wing servos because you want that surface to work correctly so they come out a little bit from the top of the wing. Glued on my receiver, routed the antennas for that, 
And then we start onto the wheels, which I thought I would have to ream them out a little bit, but they were actually perfect for the size. So put the wheels on, put the little wooden nuts on, and then put the antalyzer on. And then we're ready for the final glue up on the wing. And you're gonna measure from wing tip to tail tip and make sure it's the same on both sides. Get it nice and stuck down. Now we're doing all of the rest of the side force generators and there are a bunch. And I'm also gonna go back and squish the wings down a couple more times. I thought of putting this little canopy on, but I wanted that area to be able to put the battery in. So I did not put that part on, but I did put the forward canopy on over the ESC. I like how that area looks. We will also be putting on the optional turbo exhaust stacks because this is a turbo beaver. And when you put these on, it kind of looks like a little, little mustache. Who doesn't like a mustache on their beaver? The next thing we're gonna do is balance our prop. And I have to admit, this is the first prop that I've balanced. And it was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. You just put some tape on the back side of it, trim it as you need to in order to get it balanced. I never thought that this was a big deal until I balanced the propeller and was able to compare it with a, an unbalanced one on another model. And it, it is a world of difference. So get yourself a prop balancer. It is not that hard and does, in fact, help out. Here I am setting the CG and then verifying that all my surfaces are only going as far as I need them to go. Setting my endpoints. I set mine up with 70% expo and then 100% throws. But that's a matter of taste again. It depends on how you like to fly. Did a little bit of adjusting here and there. Made sure I wasn't having any interference between my rudder and elevator. I've made that mistake before. And then verifying that my ailerons are getting all the throw I want to out of them as well. This completes the build for our beaver. I did add a couple things. I put a little piece of carbon fiber in the end underneath the rudder to hold it off the ground. I also put some Velcro underneath the fuselage. Uh, I think I like that location the best for the battery. I'll probably run my wires down through to there. I also set it up to have flapperons and I set it up with my TX16S so that it's on a slider so that I can pull it down and still have ailerons, and I can also push it up to be spoilerons if wanted to. I really enjoy how this plane flies, and I hope you enjoyed the build.